You are highly welcome to our final series, which is the third, on developing your purpose. And the specific example we're going to be considering from Scripture is the person of David. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. As we look into the life of King David in regards to developing your purpose for our lives, give us understanding and illumination. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in series one and series two of this theme, developing your purpose, we looked at the life of Jephthah and Joseph, respectively. As we close this series on developing your purpose today, we are going to be looking at the life of David. David was a man after the heart of God. And indeed, I want to believe that he fulfilled God's purpose for him on the earth. Let us take a little example, sorry, a little study, you know, from the process of David fulfilling his life's purpose. Amen. Praise God. Now, as we said in the previous series, God has endowed you with certain gifts and talents that are to be employed in the accomplishment of your life's purpose. If you do not develop these gifts or talents, you will certainly not fulfill God's purpose for your life because God gave them to you to enable you, you know, to accomplish them. And it was the same for David. David, you know, had the gift of playing a harp. And the harp, of course, is a musical instrument. And he knew about this gift, about his possession of this gift at a tender age. And indeed, he developed it to the, to the extent that it became skillful, you know, in the use of the harp. Amen. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, God, of course, had anointed Saul to be king before this time. But because of the persistent disobedience of Saul to God's instruction, God rejected, God rejected Saul. And when he rejected Saul, the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from God came unto him. Amen. And whenever this evil came, came upon Saul, evil spirit came upon Saul, it tormented him. And it got to the point that Saul himself suggested that they should get a, an expert, a cunning player in a musical instrument who would be able to play so that whenever this evil spirit from the Lord came upon him and was tormenting him, you know, this, skillful, this music coming from this skillful player would be able to suit him and the evil spirit would depart from him. Amen. Now, when Paul, sorry, when Saul made this request, one of the servants of Saul who had identified David as a cunning player, and the word cunning means skillful, a well-trained player, you know, with a harp, he recommended David, you know, to, to Saul. Praise God. Let me read 1 Samuel chapter 16. But before that, let me read 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. Verse 14 says, But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubled thee. Look at verse 18. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite that is cunning in playing. That's what cunning means skillful or an expert in the playing of a musical, uh, musical instrument. In this case, you know, it was the harp. And so this servant suggested or rather recommended that David be engaged because he has seen David play skillfully. Again, I want to emphasize, as I did in the second series under Joseph, if David had hidden his talent, if David had hidden his skillfulness in the play of the harp, there is no way this servant, Saul's servant, would have recommended it to him because he would not have known, you know, that Saul, that David was capable, you know, of playing such a musical equipment. And that is why it's important that you identify your gift, develop the gift, and use it. Be skillful in whatever gift or talent that God has endowed you with and use it. Let people see you use it. Use it to bless people. And that when the need arises, it is these same people that have benefited from the exercise or the utilization of those gifts in their lives that will recommend you, you know, to others. So it was this servant that recommended David. 
And his recommending David was based on the fact that David was skillful. He was an expert, a well-trained person, you know, in playing the harp. So, praise God. So, this is the first thing, you know, that brought, this is the first gift that David had that brought him into the palace to have an encounter, you know, with Saul. And indeed, he began to stay in the palace as a result of uh, his expertise or his cunningness in the use of the harp. Praise God. Uh, let me read verse, let me read uh, 1 Samuel 16 again, verse 19. Wherefore, Saul sent messengers unto David. That is, after the servant had recommended David, Saul the king himself sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. In other words, David was taking care of the sheep. Verse 20. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David his son unto Saul. Verse 21. And David came to Saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. Amen. Verse 22. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray, this stand before me, for he had found favor in my sight. What brought that favor? What brought that favor, you know, you know the favor of David in the, in the sight of Saul was the fact that he was cunning in playing the harp. He was skillful in this specific gift that God had given unto him. You have to be skillful in, in, in the utilization of what God has endowed you with. It doesn't matter whether it is small or big. It doesn't matter whether it is, whether it is one or, or a multitude of gifts. You've got to be skillful in that which God, which God had endowed you and blessed you with. And as you become skillful in the use of that gift, it will indeed bring you, you know, before great men. Praise God. Now, when David was first brought you know, into the palace, as we have just seen, to minister to King Saul, it was because of his skillfulness in the use you know, of the harp. But this was just the beginning of the process of David fulfilling his life's purpose. It's a process. And so it's not a one-shot thing. Amen. And so you must develop your gift and use it skillfully. Mediocrity will hinder you from fulfilling your life's purpose. Amen. And so it's important that you develop the gift. Become an expert. Don't be a, a mediocre in the use of your gift. Praise God. The next stage in David's fulfilling process of fulfilling his life's purpose, you know, had to do with being skillful in another gift. In other words, David didn't just have one gift. One, the, the first gift we've identified is his cunningness in the playing of the harp. So he had the gift of playing the harp, of playing that, that specific, you know, musical equipment. And the, his skillfulness in that gift brought him, you know, before so brought him into the palace. But that wasn't the only gift that he had. He had another gift again. And this gift was what brought him to confront Goliath and also to kill him. Amen. Praise God. And so this, this second gift is the sling, or what will come in a local palace, the catapult. He was skillful, you know, in the use of this catapult. He had trained himself sufficiently in the use of the catapult when he was of the sling, when he was taking care, you know, of his, of his father's sheep. Praise God. Now, do you think that if David was not skillful in the use of the sling, do you think he would have dared to come to confront Goliath? who was well fortified from, the, from top down. Don't you think he would, have, he, would have, he, would have been, he would have been considered as an insane person to come before Goliath, who is well fortified, well experienced in war, and to say he wants to fight him with just a sling? If he wasn't an expert, if he wasn't cunning, if he wasn't skillful in the use of that particular tool, definitely would have been considered a mad person. But David wasn't insane. He was well trained in the use, you know, of the sling. Amen. And you see this carefully from the scripture. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, which we shall read soon, after David was introduced, David came before Saul and said he would confront uh, Goliath. And David gave him the authorization to go. What Saul did was to arm David with his weapon. When he armed David with his weapon, David said, I am not used to this weapon. I cannot go in them. And in fact, if he had dared to go in those weapons, 
before Goliath, Goliath would have killed him and given his head to the birds of the air to eat. But he cried out, I am not skillful. I don't know how to use this. Now, let's read, let's read verse 38 of 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel 17 verse 38, it says, And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put his helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. Verse 39, And David gathered the sword upon his, upon his armor, and he has said to go. Amen. For he had said to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with this, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. David rejected the armor of Saul because he had not proved them. He's not used to them. He's not trained to use them. Amen. He put them off and then he took something else. He took his sling and stones. Why? Because he was used to those. He was proficient. He was skillful in the use of the sling. But how did he become useful in the skill? Sorry, in the use of the sling. He must have trained himself in the use of the sling when he took care of his father's sheep, you know, in the desert. Amen. Praise God. Now, when David came before Goliath, of course, Goliath boasted first and said he's going to give David's head to the beds of the air. And then David also boasted that the God of Israel, you know, would deliver Goliath into his hand and he would kill him and cut his head off. Do you think that when David was boasting concerning God, the ability of God to defeat Goliath and the Philistines and to give them over to the Israelites, do you think David was not skillful in the use of the sling and that he was just depending upon his boasting alone? Certainly not. It is good to boast in the Lord. You must boast in the Lord. But at the same time, you must be skillful in that which God has given to you, that which he has endowed you with in fighting your spiritual warfare. You do not go before the enemy just with empty boast. Your empty boast is not going to earn you anything but a defeat. Amen. Praise God. So you've got to develop whatever it is that God has endowed you with. And that David did. He developed himself in the use of the sling. And then he could boast that, look, I am coming against you in the name of the Lord. And the Lord God himself is going to give the victory, you know, unto me. Amen. Praise God. And so when David ran before Goliath, towards Goliath, and shot the sling, thank God the Holy Spirit must have helped the stone from the sling, you know, to get to the defenseless part of Goliath. But I also believe that due to the skillfulness, the training that God had used, you know, to build up David over the years when he took care of his father's sheep, that training came into play, that skillfulness, that expertise came into place that David was able to shoot at the defenseless part of Goliath. Now, 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 watch this. Imagine that David shot at Goliath, but that stone, you know, hit the shield of Goliath. What do you think Goliath would have done? Of course, if the stone should hit the shield of Goliath, it's not, going to, it's not going to do any harm to Goliath. Before David brings another stone out from his back to shoot at Goliath, Goliath will remove his head. But because David was skillful, together with the anointing of God upon his life, he could direct that stone to the defenseless part, you know, of Goliath. Listen, you must be very skillful in whatever gift or talent that God has endowed you with, you must develop it. Be skillful in its use. Because in the battlefront, there is no time for training. You should be trained before you get to the battlefront. If you're going to fulfill your life's purpose, you must develop whatever gift or talent that God has endowed you with. Amen. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 48 says, And it came to pass, when the Philistine arose and came, and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Amen. David got this gift which is the use of the sling from God. Having received this gift, he developed it. 
he trained himself and became proficient, became an expert, became skillful in the use of this gift. Amen. With his faith in God, he employed this gift. He shot this thing, just the first stone that he shot at Goliath. And he went straight to the forehead of Goliath, which was not, which was not protected. Think about that. Every other part of Goliath's head, the eyes, the nose, everything, the ears, they were all protected by the helmet which he had on. But it was just that little spot on his forehead, forehead that was left open. And that was where the stone went to. Your skillfulness, your skillfulness in the use of the gift that God has endowed you with, we cause you, we enable you and empower you to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Quit being a mediocre. Get skillful in anything that you do. It doesn't matter what it is, whether low or high, whether high status, low status, middle status, whatever gift, no matter how small, how big it is, develop this gift. Be skillful in the use of it and you will fulfill your life's purpose. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Again, we ask that you will help us to identify and to develop the giftings upon our lives. Help us to invest time and resources in developing that which you have endowed us with and help us to be skillful and proficient in the use of these gifts. And as we do this, Lord, let them help us to fulfill our life's purpose. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Glory to God. God bless you.